Hey there, fellow potters. I'm Will, and welcome back to Willow's Southwest Studio. Today, we're diving into a fascinating do-it-yourself project that's both fun and free. Did you know that you could turn ordinary soil from your backyard into workable clay for your pottery projects? That's right. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process of finding, processing, and using wild clay. So grab your shovels and let's get ready to get started. So as you can see, I've got a pretty good sized pit that I've dug, and I'm just looking until I get some really hard material. This is all dirt right here, nothing of it's clay. But I think I finally come to a layer where it started to change different colors, and some of this dirt's got a little bit of crackly texture to it. So I'm kind of hoping that it might be some clay. So I'm going to start digging a little bit more out of here, take a few samples, take it back to my house and process it, and hope for the best. The first step in our wild clay adventure is finding a good spot in your backyard. Look for areas where the soil is rich and dense. Clay is often found in rivers, streams, or in low-lying areas where water collects, but you might be surprised to find it right under your feet. As you start to dig around, you'll eventually notice that the soil changes in its texture. Out here in the desert, though, the ground is always super rock hard. But if you live back east where it rains quite a bit, or even up north, you're gonna find it to be a rather sticky layer, and that's usually a good sign that there's some clay. And it's always gonna be right under that topsoil layer. This is where you're gonna find, most of the time, some clay. Whether it's actually workable, though, and usable, that's where the real question lies. So I got all the goods I need. All I gotta do now is head back home, do a little bit of navigation, and see if we've got any clay out of all this. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I've got my bag of soil that I collected at my grandparents' house. This is some good, crazy-looking stuff here. I'm just going to grab this and throw it into this bucket that I've added some water in. As you can see, I've got a really small bucket. This is going to be perfect for what I'm doing. I live in an apartment, so I don't really have a lot of room to work with, and using a bigger bucket just isn't feasible all the time. So this little bucket is perfect. I'm just going to start to scoop some in with my hand here. Drop that in the water like so. I'm going to add a little bit more water, because I think I may have added a little bit too much dirt. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So I've got here a painter's screener. I'm just going to put this over my other bucket that's completely empty. It does have a little bit of some water in there, but uh, nothing too crazy right now. We'll just make sure this is nice and secure. And we're going to let water do all the work in this levigating here. I'm just stirring it around, making sure all the soil clumps are all broken up. We want as much of that stuff floating around that might be clay. That's where we get really dirty right here. It's going to get messy really quick. So you can see I've got some, some good mud right there. All right. Pick this bucket up and we're going to dump it in here carefully. Just going to pour that in like that. Now I'm not going to pour the whole thing because some of that is going to be some silt in there and I do not want that in my clay. That'll make it really crumbly and brittle. So you can see I just stopped right there. I didn't pour the whole thing in and now I've got all this really nasty stuff right here. This is all roots and other organic material that I don't want in my clay. Ugh, just look at that. We'll just discard this. See, the clay is going to start to settle as it sits for a long period of time. And then we've got our garbage right here. This is stuff that's not clay. And then right over here, we've got the stuff that is the clay. So for this project, I'm going to let this sit for about three hours. We'll come back and take a look at it and see how it's all settled down. So it's been three hours, and you can see we've got quite a bit of clay here now. Oh, this is beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently pick this bucket up, and I'm going to dump all the water out into my old dirty bucket here. Very carefully, though. I just want to be gentle because I don't want to kick up that clay that's settled at the bottom. We're just going to pour this on in there. And you can see how that clay just kind of sticks to the bottom, thankfully. The longer you let it settle, the uh, more it's going to collect at the bottom, and you won't have too many problems. As you can see right here, it's starting to 
get close to the edge. So I gotta keep an eye on that. I don't wanna lose any of the goods. There we go. It's just pouring out beautifully. Ah, look at that. Almost looks like chocolate pudding in there, doesn't it? Oh, man. So I'll just dump the rest of the old dirty water. If you live in an apartment, you definitely don't want to dump this down the drain pipes, guys. That would be really bad. So make sure you have a way to discard that. So for the next step here, I've got some clothespins that I'm going to be using. Quite a number of them, too. Oh, man. Can never have too many of these. And I've got this old dirty cloth material right here, which is just basically a painter's cleanup rag. This comes in really handy when it comes to purifying clay. So I'm going to put this rag right over this dirty bucket here, just like that. And I'm going to take these clothespins, and I'm going to tack it down. And you'll see why I'm going to do this in just a moment here. This is kind of important. If you don't do this, well, that rag is not going to stay in place when you pour the clay into it. And, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be good. So we're definitely going to need some way to tack it down. So just clip these on like so. Kind of create a nice little happy nest for the clay to rest itself in when we pour it in. Oh, this is just beautiful. Oh, the last one's always got to be stubborn. And now we got our good clay that we're about to pour. Mmm. Oh boy, just look at this, guys. <laughs> oh man. All right. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of break it up, sear it up so it gets a little more liquidy. That's gonna make pouring it a lot easier. Oh, this is some good looking clay. Ah, oh, just beautiful. Just kind of shuffle it around and get it broken up. Scrape in the bottom here just a little bit. Oh boy. There we go. This looks like something I can put on my next ice cream sundae, doesn't it? Oh, this is wild. This clay always has a nice, beautiful smell to it, too. Mm. So I've got it all scraped out here at the bottom. Looks like it's almost to the consistency where I can pour it now. Nice and thick. There's always some stubborn spots at the very bottom of these, though. But I think we'll be fine. Definitely ready to pour this. We're just gonna carefully let it go. There we go. Yep. There we go. Oh, man. There's that stubborn stuff. We'll just kind of scrape some of this out. I'll show you a quick trick here in just a second on how we can really get this out easy. Swish it back and forth. And here's that trick, guys. Had a little bit of water. Not too much, though, but just a little bit. Ah, a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Don't want to get too crazy here. Oh, boy. Swish that around. Now you can see how we're loosening it all up real quick and easy. Just making short work of that. There's always that little bit of stubborn stuff here. Just got to scrape it out. Swish, swish, swish. Oh, boy. Man. This, some of this is stubborn. This is a good sign, though, that this could be good clay when it clumps and sticks like this. Pretty optimistic about it. Boom! Just like that. Oh, look at that. That's all the good clay. Now we just have to wait a very long time. Usually about a day or two. It really depends on your environment uh, for that to dry up. You can see it's only been two hours, and it's pretty drying out already here. So this is some stuff I already processed. So I'll go through all the steps I go through to break this down. This is really beautiful dry clay. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. And this just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Just raw clay. Oh, well, let's get it broken up. So sometimes the clay is so weak we can break it up by your hand like that. And you can use a hammer. I'm using this corn grinder here. And I find this to be pretty efficient. I know a lot of potters use these corn. This is like a staple tool for pottery if you're doing uh, dry clay. I've got here my catch bowl that I'm going to be using, which is just basically a gold pan, but uh, it catches all the clay. I'm going to have a, the setting a little bit loose. This clay is just a little bit on the rough side for this thing, which is another good sign that this could be some good clay. 
It is like solid rock hard the way it dried. Not brittle at all. You can see I'm struggling here, man. Oh my goodness, this crank. There we go. There we go. Whew. Spin this crazy thing around. Ugh, getting hung up again though. There we go. Slow and steady with this clay. Oh boy. <laughs> Come on, my friend. Come on. Ah! There we go. And here we have our beautiful, pure, unrefined clay. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I just love this powdery form. Well, I couldn't find my hammer, so I've got to improvise. Yep, this is a bicycle lock, guys. But it's pretty solid, and it's definitely going to do its job. Oh, boy. If not, a little bit on the embarrassing side. But, like I said, sometimes you just got to make do with what you've got. Here, we've got it all broken up into little small chunks. This should feed through the corn grinder a lot better. And we'll just dump that in there like that. Whoop. There we go. All right. That's about the size you need for the corn grinder right there. Oh, man, but it's ugh, still getting hung up a little bit. This is some tough clay. When you're all done with it, I like to use these little Ziploc storage bags. You could use a bucket or any type of container, especially if you're processing a lot of the stuff. I usually don't process a lot. And my projects are small, so I just store it in these nice little handy Ziploc bags. Ugh, getting it in here is always the trick. Could probably use a funnel or something like that, but uh, yikes. Lost a little bit there. There we go. Ugh, just get that in. Ah. So here we are with a full bag of clay. All that stuff's been processed. Beautiful. Oh boy. So here's some bonus material. I've got here some raw clay that doesn't need to be processed or levigated. You can see all the chunks in it and rocks. This is great clay. I don't even need to add temper to it. It's already got it added into it. I just need to feed it in here. Oh yeah, this is one happy corn grinder. No problem getting hung up this time on this clay, is there? Oh. Just beautiful. One important thing that I highly recommend Always, always, always label your bags. You don't want to be that guy that uh, months later, hmm, what was that clay that was in here again? Uh-oh, I can't remember for the life of me. So now for the big question. How do you process that dry processed clay? So I've got one scoop here. I'm just going to dump that onto my really used cookie sheet that I use to mix my clay with. Just like that. Put a little crater in there, because I'm going to add some temper now to this. So the temper I have here is just some sand. It's a bunch of feldspar sand, which is really great for my Sanawa replica pottery. And here is the feldspar temper that I'm adding. Really good stuff right here. Just pour it on in like so. Ah, oh, beautiful. So now all we got to do is mix this stuff up. I've got here this little tool. You can use any kind of thing. You can mix it, your hands. An old credit card. This is a piece of Lexon I've used for years to mix up my clay. It's just so handy for scraping off the clay from the cookie sheet and mixing and all that good stuff. It's definitely seen its use. The nice thing about dry processing is I don't need to knead the clay. I'm already doing that right here, getting everything mixed in really well. When I add the water, it's going to be kneaded in even more, so that'll make life super easy. And you can see all the temper mixed in just perfectly. Wow, I love this. So I've got the old squirt bottle here, and it's time to go to town. Oh boy. We'll just squirt this down. Now I could just dump some water in there if I wanted to, but I always like my clay to be a little bit on the dry side when I work with it. I know that sounds crazy, but it's just kind of how I've learned to adapt to working with clay. So I like to have a lot of control over how much moisture gets put into my clay. Otherwise, I would have just dumped a bucket of water in there and just kind of mixed it as is. Well, not a bucket, but uh, a little bit so that way, you know, your clay is nice and wet to work with. I find, though, this just gives me the control that I need to get it to the consistency that I really like working with for any type of clay, which always seems to be a bit on the dry side. And I'll just keep mixing this around. Eventually, I'll use both hands to really start getting it going. It's way too dry right now. So I add some more water. I'm also using distilled water on this. 
We have so much hard water out here in Arizona. Oh my goodness, guys. That calcium can sometimes be your worst enemy when it comes to clay. So be careful of that. Definitely be careful of that. That's mainly because they pump underground the water where there's a lot of calcium deposits. If I had got this from the river or something like that, I wouldn't have to worry about the calcium problems as much. But I'm definitely using distilled water here. So you can see that tool comes in handy for scraping this clay. Oh, there we go. Start packing it in. Definitely feeling like some good solid clay here, this stuff. I'm liking this so far. Hmm. A lot of bit of loose ends here. I'll just pick those up and start another ball. Try and get the rest of them picked up with this new one here. Try and grab as much clay as I can. I'll just combine both of these together and start mixing them up. One nice thing about this clay, it's really not sticking to my hands. It's like some clays I use that are really sticky. So this is this is a good sign so far. It has a really nice feel to it. I got high hopes for this stuff. I really hope it works. And we'll just keep mixing a little bit more in. It's almost there. Has a really good feel to it. I'm super excited about this. Beat it into a ball now. And here we are. Look at this beautiful ball of clay, all ready to be used. Oh, just beautiful. And real quick, let's test this clay out with a small sample bowl. We'll just flatten this out a bit. I did add a little extra temper to it, and oh boy. You can tell it's pretty crackly because of the extra temper. But we'll be fine. So here I got it smashed into a pookie. We're only going that high up to see if it holds its shape. And then we'll give it a good firing once this all dries. And see if the clay is workable. If it holds up in the fire, if it holds up in the drying stage, you're golden. So there it is, guys. Just how to process clay from your backyard. And there you have it, my friends. Your backyard is now ready to be used for pottery. Whether you're making bowls or mugs or any other creative projects, this natural clay is perfect for all your pottery needs. I really hope you guys learned something from this video today. If you did, please be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button and helping this channel grow. I do a lot of pottery and lapidary stuff, so there's always something crazy going on here at Old Willow's Southwest Studio. Alright my friends, once again, thanks so much for watching. Till next time.